Hi, this is Advanced Calculus, and today we are doing Chapter 2, The Real Number System. The real number system is something that everybody is very familiar with. It's just all the numbers we know. It has a bunch of properties that we've been taught as in childhood. That is the commutative law, the distributive law, the associative law, etc. And it has 0 and 1, which has identity properties. Now, this, all these properties actually has a mathematical term in it. It makes the real number into a, something called a field, which will be studied in much more depth in, uh, in abstract algebra. For now, we'll move on and consider the properties of the real number system. Of course, it has certain inequality, quality, uh, inequality uh, features. It also has, um, but more interestingly, well, right now we're going to focus on something called the natural numbers, which is, of course, the integers that uh, we learned. But here's the definition of the natural number, which is defined actually by mathematical induction. The mathematical induction rules says this, that if you have something, you have one. First, mathematical induction always have one. And then the second condition is that if x is a member of this class, then so is x plus 1. And as it works out, then natural numbers form the smallest class of real numbers that possess the mathematical induction properties. And this principle, which is uh, you can also consider an axiom, is what we think of as the mathematical induction principle, which, of course, you have seen many times before. Now we're going to do an example of showing how this kind of stuff works that uh, you will likely not have seen before, this kind of proof. So here's something new and exciting. The problem says this. If S is a class of positive integers containing at least one member, then it contains the smallest number. Now that, on the surface, seems obvious. Uh, if you have a bunch of positive integers, then obviously you have a smallest uh, value in there. However, this fact doesn't necessarily stand in, uh, for example, if you change the word positive integer to positive rationals, because, because there's no guarantee that a collection of positive rationals has even a, a, a least value. It can just get smaller and smaller uh, in very tiny amounts. So to prove this, and in order to show how we run this kind of logical proof in advanced calculus, let's uh, consider the problem. So the problem is, we first establish our premise. When you do math, you always write down what you know and what you are trying to find out. So S is a bunch of positive integers, okay? S is positive integers. It's just a collection of positive integers. Okay? And then you are trying to prove, to prove what you're trying to do is to prove that S has, S has, uh, Smallest value, smallest integer. All right. Now, to prove that, we will consider two situations. Uh, the first situation is consider the number one. Now, is the number one inside S? That is, does S contain one? If S contains one, then one is the smallest value because one is simply the smallest natural number so we don't have to think about it now the second case is more interesting is what if one does not belong to s now if one is not in s then uh, we will have we will then draft out two sets okay this the kind of set proofs are always exciting you have s here okay and the numbers in s we'll call them n and then and remember that s is not empty we, we don't mess with empty sets. They're not that exciting. OK. And then there is uh, another set. We'll call it R. And R is uh, has a bunch of stuff in there. But one thing R has is 1, because we already assume that 1 is not in S. So we will just pick put 1 in R. And the values in R, we'll call them P. Now, the, uh, <coughs> the, the way we define R is as such. Let R be the set of all integers P, okay? Now R will be the set of all integers P such that uh, such that P is smaller than N for all N, N inside S. That just means you pick every single positive integer that's less than all the stuff, 
okay? It's not equal to, it's just less than. Well, then by that definition, if R has to be the values that's less than S, then one is in there, because so R is not empty because we already said one is not in S and one is the smallest natural number. Now, the next statement, statement is the most important part. Now, let's consider the set R. Uh, what does it look like? Now, R can be a set of positive values, P. Now, if consider the mathematical induction principle. Is it true that if P is in, <coughs> if P is, excuse me, let's say P is inside R. Is it always true that P plus, P, P plus 1 is also inside R? Here's the question. Now, P plus 1. Hmm. Now, if, if that's true, that will mean that R contains all natural numbers because that's the definition of natural of natural numbers. Is for, it's that it has 1, and then for every value that's inside, P plus 1 has to be in there too. So it, this statement cannot be true, okay? It's not true. So then, so then what you end up with is there exists p. So there exists a value we call a p zero such that p zero is in R, but p zero plus one is not. Now this is a very uh, powerful argument that, that will solve our problem for us. This is the critical point, okay? Now, from this point on, you just do something called uh, minor man manipulation. All right. Pardon me. It's not equal to R. That ma that's what, what matters. Okay. Which means that if P0 is plus 1 is not in R, that means there exists some kind of a number because, because R contains all the values that, that is smaller than us by definition. So, in other words, you, there is a there exists some kind of a number in here, okay, let's call it n0, such that, uh, such, forget such that, there exists n0 such that n0 is going to be less than or equal to p0 plus 1. And that's the critical point. So p0 plus 1 is bigger than something in here. Because R contains all the numbers that's smaller than everything in here. So if it's not in there, then P0 has to be bigger than something. Not everything necessarily, but something. Then this is what we're looking for. Then we, we claim that N0 is the number that is the smallest integer in S. How do you prove that? Well, uh, to prove that, you do some algebraic man manipulation. Now, for example, if n is n, we first we have uh, we'll manipulate what we know. Is first we have say p zero is less than n, okay? That's for any n in here by definition, and then we will we will set up another integer called m, and we'll put m equals to n n minus p zero. The purpose of that, and this m is bigger than 0 because, well, n is bigger than p0. So the subtraction is, is going to be at least 1, and it's an integer. Or put it another way is, uh, let's see, p0 plus m equals to n. Well, so far so good. Now, so now we'll do this thing. It's called n0. So we'll go from here, okay? We'll copy this thing, which says n0 is less than or equal to p0 plus 1, which is just repeating that. And then, which is less than this thing right here, p0 plus m. Okay, because m is at least 1. It's bigger than 1. Bigger than or equal to 1 is what that means. It should be. But anyway, so it's less than or equal to m, because m is at least 1, because m is a positive integer, and uh, which this value equals to n, which is right here. <clears throat> so if it equals to n, that means 
when you look at the whole thing through, it means n0 is less than or equal to n. And n is just any random number we pick out here, which means n0 is less than anything in less than or equal to anything inside this collection, which is n means n0 must be the smallest value. And that concludes my proof. And we will do something else next time so that I can keep the video under the 15-minute law of YouTube.